On this episode, I'm going to teach you how to solder wires together like a pro, so stay tuned. Hi friends, welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to solder two wires together so they can make it one solid connection. Soldering might be intimidating to some people, especially if you're brand new and you are unfamiliar with all the things that you need. So don't worry, I am here to teach you how easily you can do this with just simple tools that you can find around your house and especially with some tools that I also recommend to use. With that being said, let me go break it down on what tools you need for this project. So here are all the materials that you will need for this project. Again, all the tools that I use within this video, I'll leave the link on the description down below. So check out all those links. Let's start off with the soldering iron. This actually has some LEDs at the tip. Now this is used if you're using smaller gauge wires, but if you're using thicker gauge wires, I think that the soldering gun by Weller, actually both of these are by Weller. I think that the solder gun is best for you very heavy duty and a lot more powerful so for this demonstration i'm going to be using the solder gun just because it's a lot more powerful a very very helpful tool is these third hands you move this because it's magnetic you can position this anywhere have already have insulated clips so that it doesn't damage the wire that you are placing on right here and it swivels any direction that you want depending on the wire strippers that you use the old school wire strippers or this automatic one which is very easy to use this one I like using because it just strips out the wire fast, easy, and clean, just like this. It's all up to your preference. Now let's get to the solder that we're gonna be using today. This is labeled as electrical. Make sure that you get the electrical made solder. This is the silver bearing rosin core solder. Now if you use the other types, it's not gonna work. Make sure that it says electrical. Now there's two versions of this. There's the lead free, like what I have here, and there's also a lead version. Now it's up to you what you want to use depending on your preference. They say that the lead is better, but for me, I use the lead free. It's all up to you. Make sure that you also get some rosin flux. This will help the solder go inside the wiring and make it flow better and will prevent oxidation in the future and will have a proper and better connection when you apply this. At the very end, I'm gonna show you how to use the silicon paste. So make sure that you stay at the very end of the video. Heat shrinks are very, very important and very straightforward. Here I got a very cheap kit that I got off Amazon. It comes with various types of sizes, all organized as well. Also, we're gonna need a wet sponge. This is what I'm gonna be using to clean off the tips of the soldering gun or the soldering iron. So every time we use it, we're gonna clean it off with this one. And last but not least, you're gonna need your wire, depending on which gauge that you want. These are smaller gauges, there's thicker gauge your wire, but I'm gonna show you how to properly connect them on the next step. Soldering wires can be fun and very therapeutic and also can be dangerous at the same time. So make sure that you use this common practices before you go and solder. Before you start this project, make sure you wear the proper safety glasses. These ones are the tinted ones, it all is up to you. There's ones that are untinted, but make sure you wear safety glasses or a face shield so that you don't have accidental pops that are coming from these solder. Also, ventilation. Make sure you are up in the open area when you're doing this. Obviously, I'm inside a garage. This is a fairly big area, but if you're soldering inside of your car, make sure that you have a fan blowing the windows or the doors open. And at the same time, if you have ventilation, make sure that you turn those on. And also you're gonna be working with some hot materials like the solder gun and the solder iron. So make sure that you keep clear and stay away from any combustibles, any fuels, any gases that might be flammable. You check around your area before starting this project just so that you keep yourself safe. So with that being said, friends, if you have missed any safety features, make sure you include it in the comment section down below. So with that being said, let's get to it. Once again, friends, you're probably asking why solder two wires together. I believe in my own honest opinion is that this is the best way to connect two wires together to have the best and strongest connection. Let's go and strip out these two wires. Okay, when you're stripping stranded wire, make sure that all the strands are there. If you only have a few wires left, that could possibly heat up in the long run. And when you go cover it, that's gonna create a short. Make sure that you have the right amount of threads on both sides, nice and even. So let me go and show you how to connect these two wires. Now there's two ways that you can do this, like so, on each side, like so, like this. You can connect them just like this, where you can go and mesh it together, just like that. Close it up and then start twisting it like so. Make sure you do your best to tuck those in and none of them are poking up like that because when you start putting that heat shrink over that, 
that could possibly poke out the heat shrink and could possibly cause a short and heat up or whatnot. So you don't want that to happen. Now let me show you the other way you can connect it. It's called the Western Union Splice. Now what you can do is you can just place it in the X like this. The other side, this one side will go the other way. The other side will go the other direction. And you're just going to twist it just like this. This is called the Western Union Splice. I do want to add that before you actually do this connection, you want to slide the piece of heat shrink first, then do this connection. With that being said, talking about heat shrinks, let me talk about that right now. So friends, sorry to break up all the excitement, but if you're finding this video super helpful and enjoyable so far, please hit that big thumbs up down below. It'll greatly help out the channel and help out this video spread out to more people. With that being said, thank you so much friends. Let's get back to the video. Now getting to the heat shrinks, it comes into many, many different sizes. You don't want to get a heat shrink that's way too big for this because if you go over that and you start shrinking it, it's going to be still loose. I think that the blue one would fit the best, but also take into mind that after we start soldering this, there's going to be a little bit of buildup of solder in this. So that's, this might affect it. So it might be the red one that we'll end up using later on. So stay tuned for that. Let me show you the difference between the soldering gun and the soldering iron. The soldering iron, once you plug it in, it will start to heat up right away. There's no control of whether to turn it on or off. The advantage of the soldering gun is that it only turns on when you pull the trigger, like so, and the light will turn on, indicating that this is getting hotter at the tip. So I'm going to be using this one in today's demonstration other than the soldering iron just because it's more powerful and we can control it a lot better. Now we're going to get our solder and we're going to get our solder gun and our sponge and what we're going to do is we're going to heat up the tip. Now this is the process called tinning. Tinning will allow for better heat transfer onto the wire and will also preserve the tips of these soldering guns. We're just putting a little bit at the end. Gonna wipe it onto the damp sponge. You have a nice coat of thin layer of solder around there for better heat transfer. This is great right here because I have these insulated tips that will protect the wire's insulation. Now we're gonna apply some rosin flux. And I'm just gonna apply some onto the top portion. Now this will allow the solder to flow better inside, the con inside those wire connections. This is a very important tip to know when you're soldering. Uh, some people, they put the solder at the top and they pretty much put the solder and let it touch at the tip and let it drip onto the wire. Now that's called cold soldering. You don't want that because you're going to end up blobs of solder at the top. It's not going to have any solder on the other sides. What you want to do is you want to take your soldering tip and heat up the bottom and feed the solder solder at the very top of this wire. So I'm going to heat this up and you're going to start seeing the flux start to melt. You're just going to touch the wire. There you go. The flux is starting to melt. Now you don't want to go too much on there, just a little bit at a time. You can go and twist this a little bit and go look around what's any bare spots. Now, if you look closer into this one, it looks like there is a bare spot right here on this bottom portion, but no need to worry. All you gotta do is turn back on your soldering gun, touch the tip like so. Now that you're done soldering this, you should have a nice connection. You got to let it cool down for just a little bit. You don't want to go and touch this because it'd still be hot. So give it a few minutes to cool down. Once that's cooled down, then we can go and apply the shrink wrap. So it looks like the blue one will fit perfectly around this. Before we go apply the shrink wrap to make this pretty much weatherproof and pretty much waterproof, we are going to apply some silicone paste. And we're going to dab it around this area right here. Now you're going to go apply it also over the insulation like so. You might get a little bit of extra excess around here when you slide this, but it's totally fine. Once that goes over, just use the sponge to wipe off the excess. Get your lighter or you can use a heat gun and you can pretty much just go and run the flame over there so it'll shrink. And then while you're doing this, a little bit of that silicone paste might ooze out at the ends, 
which is perfectly fine. You can just take it out and take out off that excess. And now you have a nice connection right here. Notice how this size of shrink wrap fits perfectly and it doesn't need much to shrink that down. So that's pretty much it friends, super easy to do. There you have it friends, that's how you solder just like how the pros do it. It might take a little bit of practice here and there to get it fine tuned, but overall it's very easy if you have the right tools and materials. Again, all the tools and materials that I use in this demonstration to show you friends, I'll leave it on the link down below. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, leave a comment on the description down below. I'll be glad to answer them for you. With that being said, please hit that big thumbs up, press the subscribe notification bell if you found this video helpful. I'll see you on the next video.